Hello, this is Minder Chen. I'm a professor of management information systems at Martin B. Smith School of Business and Economics, California State University, Channel Island. Today, we're going to talk about customer development model. Customer development model is really part of the so-called lean startup methodology, and we're following Steve Blank's、um, proposed methodology. Uh, documented in his book called Startup Owner's Menu, and the customer development model, particularly, has been well articulated and described in Steve Blank's another book called The Four Step to Epiphany. And the customer development model is part of the, as we mentioned, part of the Lean Startup movement. And a more narrowly defined lean startup can be found in Eric Rice's book called "Just Lean Startup." And a lot of time, we also use business model、um, in our lean startup process, which is documented in another book called "Business Model Generation." So, for the customer development model,、uh, the best Uh, resource to refer to is、um, this book called "The Four Steps to Epiphany." And once again, a startup is a temporary organization designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model under extreme uncertainty. So the reason t-、um, we need to search. Um, for the right customer, the right products as soon as possible is to reduce uncertainty, and, and therefore we can find a scalable、um, business model. The traditional product development process can be laid out in the following kind of simple four-stage model. Uh, first, you come up with、um, some ideas,、um, uh, product ideas, and then you engage in a lengthy product development cycle. And towards the end, you need to conduct uh, testing, uh, alpha test, referring to the internal test、uh, by the developer、uh, or development team. The beta test is referring to outside users testing of the developed products before the product launch, and once you have gone through the kind of external beta test and remove most of the bug, then it's time to launch、um, your product and and ship the first product. So this is very typical traditional product development process, and along the way,、um, you will f-、uh, along that product development cycle or process,、uh, you will f-、uh, prepare for marketing and sales related activity, and here we laid out that、um, you would start thinking about marketing. Um, um, at the product development stage, by creating so-called marketing material, marketing means marketing communication material、uh, to the potential user community.、Uh, you try to create a positioning paper to kind of define the product positioning of、um, of this product under development, and. During the testing stage, you、uh, company may start hire、uh, public relationship agency to generate some early buzz about your product even before its launch. And at the product launch stage, you try to create the demand, the market demand,、uh, the customer demand, organize the. The launch event, and then start the branding process、uh, to kind of create the brand.、Uh, sales and marketing、uh, are different.、Uh, sales is more t-、um, kind of 
person to person uh, you need to have direct contact either by phone or paying a visit to the customers organizations and you would start that process uh, probably at the testing stage uh, because then you most likely soon you will have a product that you can sell um, you will start to hire uh, some of your first sales staff members and and right before the launch and you will start building the sales organization uh, get it organized hire the vp of sales and here you probably will start hiring the so-called vp of marketing uh, if you're a startup firm but let's first look at this how this traditional model um, will work and, and probably will not work uh, using a case uh, called wet van uh, this is in the early day of the e-commerce history uh, in the mid 90 and wet van uh, is actually a kind of online grocery shopping uh, website and you can find the case uh, detail by following this link and you can also find it in the so in the four step to epiphany uh, chapter one and what van's um, founders idea is that um, th their philosophy is that if we build it uh, they will come people would absolutely love it they will come and use it and in hindsight uh, the spokesman of the web van uh, but uh, grab say that we believe we had a brilliant concept we were just ahead of a time which means he basically admit uh, they fail um, so let's look at uh, what happened um, what vans uh, management follow the product development model that we described uh, previously they not just follow it they follow it religiously um, however uh, it, it fails to ask uh, where are the customer um, and um, in, in this case um, this product development model um, at that time is considered a try and true model um, let the company uh, very well fund the company and well managed the startup to disasters um, they burned through about 800 million dollars okay imagine 800 million dollars uh, in just a short three years and once again you can find uh, the documentations um, describe this case here as well and what van's philosophy um, another philosophy driving this other than following the product development model is um, in, in at that time it's very common in e-commerce world is get big fast uh, GBF model get big fast model um, it was founded in December 1996 okay Amazon founded around 1995 so this is really really in the early you know, history of the web e-commerce and so they spend a lot of money on um, in developing its product which including the website the back-end warehouse buying the truck and they spent about one billion dollar I remember uh, in contracting well-known construction firms to kind of design and, and build their warehouse for them was was all the most event was a lot of advanced uh, kind of inventory management um, automated warehousing kind of a facility okay and in what then uh, began to beta test its grocery delivery service in May 1999 
which is almost three years, uh, 97, uh, 98, so that's about three years later, uh, to approximately about a, a, um, 1,100 people. Okay, It took them three years from conceiving the concept to the actual testing of the system. Okay. They raised um, about $400 million before its IPO. Okay. And what then launched its first regional web, web store? Uh, because, I mean, when you say web is global, once you put it on the web, it's global. However, the delivery of the grocery limit its operation uh, to certain region. Uh, so they, they launched the regional web store in June 1999. And when um, IPO, um, initial public offering, sell their stock in the public uh, marketplace, uh, 60 days later, okay, they raised uh, another uh, 375 million. Uh, this is before IPO, they already raised this much. After IPO, they raise another almost equivalent amount of money, um, $375 million, which put its valuation, and sometimes we call it market caps, to close to $5 billion. And however, 18 months later, uh, after the IPO, uh, WebVan declared bankruptcy uh, due to they, they found there's just not enough users using their uh, service to sustain the business. Uh, therefore, its business model just uh, didn't work. So why it, it fails? Um, the value is not in what Vans execution of its business plan? They they actually execute its business plan perfectly. The problem is that um, what Vans management team or development team did not listen to customer um, early enough, soon enough. They they just believe everybody need to um, get grocery and people visit grocery store and spending the money so there's a huge market out there that's how they convince the uh, the investors um, to to invest uh, in the company okay and however t uh, once they have their truck purchase warehouse build and website ready and they found out that just not enough people somehow use their system uh, this is partially due to that in the early stage, then a lot of people still not comfortable with using the web. Um, and so the revenues generated did not match uh, their forecast in their business plan. And they, they did not pivot um, to maybe trying out different models, such as instead of building the, their own warehouse, maybe collaborate with existing grocery store to provide a delivery service. Okay. Uh, now, uh, in today's world, um, there are a few grocery delivery service, uh, web-based delivery service are surviving. I mean, or there's a research interest in grocery delivery. Um, and which some of them are relatively successful. So to some extent, yes, they are um, ahead of the time, but at the same time that their approach of spending lots of money before they have kind of tested the market, um, they spend a lot of money in building an unproven, a product for an unproven marketplace is really the reason for their value. So that's how we can turn that around. So we really need to change that product first philosophy to the customer first philosophy. Hence the so-called customer development model. Uh, this is 
proposed by Steve Blank. And basically, you start with customer. Pretty much everybody know this. Like you, st- when you build a product, you need to start with customer's requirement. However, Steve Blank's emphasis is not just start with the customer's needs or requirement. It's really start with finding the customer first. Okay, finding the customer, real customer, willing to pay for the product that you have in mind. You don't even need to have a product developed. You can start going out and talk to potential customer. Find those customer that you think will come knocking on your door and buy your products, and and that's what we call customer development um, um, model and customer first、uh, philosophy. So this customer development model has four. Stages.、Uh, we're going to go through in this detail, but just very quickly. The first is customer discovery, and the second is customer validation. The third is customer creation. The fourth is company building. Okay. At every stage, and you will go through smaller steps to make sure you you find the right customer. You validate, make sure that customer are for real, willing to pay for your product, and then you will create a customer once you have your product more or less fully developed. And once you generate a lot of demands, then it's time to kind of build your company. And along the way, sometime you、uh, through the validation. Process of the customer, you may find、uh, there's not a good fit between your product and the customer. Then you will pivot your business model,、uh, revising your product、uh, requirement features, or、uh, target a different customer segment uh, of um, the existing product. And that's what we call pivot. So let's look at、um, this four stages again.、Uh, we we can divide it up into two major phases. The customer discovery and customer validation is really、uh, a phase、um, that that is searching for、uh, the right business model. Okay, for the right business model. And we're asking the question like, what are we selling and to whom? So we try to find the right mark product market fit. Okay, that's an important、uh, terminology and concept. We try to find the right product market fit. Okay, so at the end of the customer validation stage, you should have found the product market fit. Okay, and once you have found the right product market fit, then you move to the next major phase, which is to execute the business model. Okay, at this time you have more or less the proven business model, and you just need to execute it, which involve customer creation and company building. Okay, so we are. Transition,、um, transitioning from a startup to a real business, and we're focusing on growth, growing your customer, and building your company. Okay, so this is how we can kind of use this four-stage model, roughly. Divided into two major phases: search for business model and and execute、um, the proven business model. And along the way, particularly in the search process, you would try to discover customer and then validate the customer. If Somehow,、um, you found there's a mismatch. There's not enough fit. Then you will pivot, 
revise your business model and t- and go through this two stages it um through iteration until you find the right product market fit okay you may watch steve blank's video which explain this um in in detail so during the customer discovery process um we take um several steps um we will state our hypothesis on a um, number of hypotheses, including problem hypothesis, which we will test first. Then we will test uh, some of the hypotheses about our product to test our product concept, and we will verify that. And the sooner you can go get out of the building and test uh, those hypotheses about uh, whether you find the right problem that really matter uh, in the mind of the customer segment that you target and or your product idea really are addressing that pressing need um, of your target customer segment. Uh, you need to go out and test it. And ideal, we mentioned that often say that um, fail often to succeed sooner. Um, not only I may add, not only we try to fail often, uh, we try to fail um, early. Okay, fail sooner and often in order to succeed sooner. Okay, or even you're, it's a totally failure. You're not wasting a lot of resource. Let's put it this way. So if you have never failed, you have never tried anything new. Um, Einstein once said that a person who never made a mistake and never try anything new. So here, this um, we need to try our ideas, our product concepts uh, with real customer as soon as possible in this customer uh, discovery st- stage. This is from Steve Blank's book. Uh, basically, you will state your hypothesis, uh, product hypothesis, customer problem hypothesis. This um, customer problem hypothesis can come first, by the way. And some hypothesis about your distribution, your pricing, your demand creation hypothesis, and the type of the market that you've, um, you try to target and the kind of competition that you may encounter and then you go ahead and test the problem hypothesis first and so you try to make contact with maybe friend and relative you would kind of present the problem to them to see whether they feel the same pains as you assume they will um, and th- this will allow you to understand your customer better and gain knowledge about the marketplace. Then you will test your product hypothesis, um, this kind of a reality check. And you say, okay, now we have this problem. I have this idea about solving this problem. So you make a so-called product presentation. Here we put product in quote, means that you probably don't even have a product developed yet. You may have kind of conceptual design of your product, some sketches of a prototype. You may not even have a functional or workable prototype here. Okay. Then you would um, you would go and visit your customer, assuming you have some product cooking but not ready yet, and that's kind of your reality check. Okay. You may try to recruit someone on your advisory board who may have the insight domain knowledge of the marketplace or the product uh, kind of technology knowledge uh, to give you the advice. Uh, If you can have some people with that expertise, that certainly would be great. And eventually you will verify that you're working on the right problem, your product roadmap is in the right direction, and then you verify that you have the right business model. And certainly you may revise your business model 
based on the feedback you get from your problem presentation and product presentation to the potential customers and and revise it, verify and revise the problem hypothesis and the product hypothesis and verify your business model and you iterate until you are happy with your business model which include your your definition of the problem and your uh, product development concept your uh, product concept then you can go to the next stage to validate to start building the first uh, prototype um, more realistic prototype and go out and validate with the customer that's the second stage so the characteristic of this technology driven customer development is you're moving with um, speed you start with a series of core hypotheses that we just discussed um, what the product is what the problem uh, the product try to solve and who would use and more importantly pay for it you try to find um, product market fit it's customer first not the product first approach and um, you will pursue potential customer outside the building uh, to test your hypothesis uh, we will trade off certainty um, which means reduce uncertainty uh, so we will trade off certainty for speed and tempo using good enough decision making um, even like a prototype a prototype is kind of good enough then you go out and, t and test in the marketplace you don't go plate on uh, your product uh, until it's perfect then you go out and test and that's not the right way okay if it's good enough is enough so we would rapidly um, kind of build a so-called minimal viable product we have a term called MVP minimal viable product which is a functional workable uh, prototype that the user can use um, for learning purpose okay and learning about the customer learning about the market learning about the product feature that's the right feature for the right market uh, we will assume that um, our hypothesis may be wrong um, so um, we're always ready for rapid uh, iteration and pivots to revise um, our product requirement to revise our uh, marketing plan and, and certainly revise basically our business model so once again by comparison um, the tech startup um, basically founder has a product vision a lot of some of the founders of uh, well-known startup firms such as Facebook's uh, in the early days even like Microsoft and they are um, kind of technical um, in, in their training so they have some sense of the market but really they're very product focused so they have a product vision they build the product and then they try to find customer okay um, their launch timing um, is driven by their business plan and this is where they will hire um, basically the marketing staff as we mentioned earlier now we're in the 21st centuries um, we're using the so-called lean uh, tech startup um, that still the founder may have a product vision so they're basically they're technology driven but they try to build um, the minimum viable products as soon as possible and go through the iterations in terms of customer discovery and, and particularly customer 
validation. <clears throat> and um, and we go through this in the iterated process and pivot um, the product um, requirement and the customer's um, marketplace, etc. Until we um, we find the product market fit, then that's the time we will actually uh, hire sales um, staff. Okay, and design thinking by comparison um, certainly also focus on customer, um, but it's less technology driven. They're more business pool or more human center. We tend to start with customers' needs and then they will we will build the minimum viable products. And we go through this in the iterative process. Along the way we have a better understanding of the customer's need and then they will we will actually revise um, our products um, and and actually keep refining the prototype until we got the right product. So we collect um, very extensive data about the customers in the market. Eventually we have the right product, we launch the product, and certainly we hire the sales staff to do so. So we can compare the customer development design thinking. There are some similarity between these two approach. And they're both um, customer. They both have this customer discovery processes. And customer development start with, I have a technology and product, so it's kind of still product first. Now, who do I sell it to? So you kind of quickly try to go out um, and and try to find the customer. And when. When we say I have a technology and product, this could be at the very at the conceptual stage. You don't really need to have fully functional products yet. Design thinking starts with I need to understand customer needs and iterate prototype until I find a technology and product that satisfy this need. And customer development is optimized for speed and good enough decision making with limited time and resources. Okay. And design thinking is optimized for getting it right before uh, we make big bets. So who are our customer, we may ask. Um, here we quickly introduce something called technology adoption life cycle. Uh, this is actually a work by Avery Roger and further defined by Jeffrey Moore uh, later. And Avery Roger found that um, when we have a new product, uh, we will have people adopt our product. Uh, the first batch, which is a very small batch, is called Innovator, and then followed by Early Adopter followed by early majority and the lay majority and the so-called lagger. Uh, and Jeffrey Moore used a different term and called this innovator called technology enthusiasts. They are the early evaluator and early adopter are the visionaries. They are also called the early angelist um, or evangelist. Um, they, and, and then the early majority um, the so-called scalable customer. Uh, lay majority is the mainstream customer. Uh, they are much more conservative. Early majority of um, pragmatists. And the lagger are always the skeptics. And the chasm here is means that for startup firm, you want to um, certainly you, you target probably the early adopter at the beginning. But eventually, if you want to scale, you want to be successful, you need to cross this chasm to get into the early majority um, um, marketplace to adopt your product. However, as a startup, you probably want to pay attention to the early angelists uh, first um, in the early market. 
and make sure you're very successful here and then you would try to scale it to create a customer uh, this is where that if you remember the customer development model this you try to create the customer and then build your company that's really the mainstream marketplace that you try to target at that later two stage so the um the early evangelists, uh, there's a hierarchy describe them. Uh, you try to find them. Uh, you try to find people who has a problem. People, um, well, people has a problem doesn't mean they're aware of it. And you want to find the people who are not just having the problem, but is aware of having a problem. And they have been, and even better, they have been actively looking for a solution. And sometimes they even put together a solution out of some existing uh, piece, pieces of parts or technology. And even better, they, they has or can acquire or allocate some budget to acquire a new solution, which is your product, to solve the problem. Okay. And so you try to find those early evangelists and, and target them. Um, another way to look at the customer are the type of customer. Uh, there are different stakeholders involved in the search evaluation, um, in the search evaluation and purchasing and using um, and the use of a product or service. Uh, they may they may need uh, have different job pains or games. Um, and sometimes you even have the so-called uh, saboteur, uh, the hater who may stop the adoption or the acquisition of the products. So we may have so-called the end user using your product and we also have other type of customer who may influence um, the purchasing of the product, who may make the recommendation of a certain product to buy. The economic buyer are someone who may have who may be able to allocate the budget and we'll also have the final decision maker to choose the, the purchasing. And certainly uh, some intermediacy or reseller are also um, some customer type we may want to pay attention to. So if you want to profile your customer, one is the end user who are actually using your product. They may be the final consumer um, and who use your product. Um, there are other so-called decision-making units. Uh, they may be the champion, their uh, economic buyers uh, who has authority to spend the money to purchase the product. Uh, and sometimes they may be the end user themselves. Uh, we mentioned earlier other decision-making unit may be the influencer or people who may have a, veto power like the CFO, this is just too expensive, we cannot spend this money now, in the purchasing department and in the corporate setting. Okay, um, last let's look at um, the so-called customer development manifesto. Um, there are um, 17 of them, so I'm going to quickly just read it uh, loud to you. Uh, you should kind of study it a little bit and look at this uh, document as well. There are no facts inside your building, so get outside, test your hypothesis. You try to pair custom development with agile development. We'll talk about what's agile development, which means very flexible, fast iteration kind of product development. You try to, um, you try to match, pair that with the custom development cycle. Value is an integral part of the search for business model. And if you're afraid to fail, you're des uh, destined to do so. So don't be afraid to, to try in the marketplace, although you know you most likely will fail on the first few try. Uh, however, you would iterate and pivot. Um, and iteration and pivots are driven by the insight um, through that customer discovery and customer validation process. So we will validate our hypothesis and through experiment. And 
your success begin with buy-in from investor and co-founder. So um, work with them closely. No business plan survive first contact with customer. So it's writing writing a lengthy business plan. Um, use this simple business model and identify hypothesis about your products, your customer, and go out and have contact with customer, first contact with customer, and, and learn from it. Not all startups are alike. Uh, so you can learn from other startups, but you need to kind of create your own unique business model. And the startup's metric are different from the existing company, which we'll talk about some of those metrics um, later. Agree on the market type, the customer type. Uh, they may uh, change all the time. Fast and fiercely decision making and emphasize on fast cycle time and speed and tempo in terms of go through that iteration. Uh, if it's not about passion, you're dead on the day that you open your door. So you do need to have the passion about the problem you try to solve, about the customer you try to serve. Um, for startup, uh, title or function are very different from the company. Um, so building up a startup organization are different than building a well-established existing company. Uh, you try to preserve cash while searching. Okay, so figure out a smart way to, to test your hypothesis so you can preserve the cash. Um, after you have found the right um, product market fit, now it's time to spend your money um, to build your um, sales force to create customer and to build the company. Uh, you try to communicate and share what you're learning in this process, customer development process. Um, startups um, need to feel comfortable with the chaos and uncertainty. And however, through this continuous learning process, try the narrow and uh, discovery and validations you will find order in chaos and you will reduce the uncertainty and certainly the social risk, which will give you a better chance to be successful with limited resource and in a fast uh, speed. So that in essence is what's all about the customer development model. I hope you enjoy it. And that's all. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.